Hello, I'm not gonna get into detail into things and like that like how to use After Effects moreover into just showing how I did this. So a lot of comment section asking how I did this or what I used or things like that and I um under the impression that you're interested into what happened behind here. So what I have here is Pivot uh, 5 and this is what I used to animate uh, Watame and you already Watame, yeah. Watame. What tell me where we recognize your name? Uh, what am I saying? Um, <laughs> so this is what I use for the animation and also for the rigging, as you can see from my previous video. And I have to change the background because right now the background is transparent. And if the background is transparent, all you have to do is just uh export this, like so. Export animation as a separate image, and you have a transparent background. So the background here, I could make it white, as you can see, and that would be the background for it. And you can probably now see the animation. Let me play it once, and you'll see how smooth it is and all that stuff. I don't know if it's even that smooth. And you can tell that it is uh, looped. It's only playing once. As you can see here, this is the first frame compared to the last frame. It has some onion skin. That's because it's going after the frame behind it but it's the same the first frame and the last frame and you'll see that there's this word here at the upper left says in between now I can make the in-betweens into 57 or numbers like that and the in-betweens on this two frames uh, you'll see how slow this will play that's because they're putting the in-betweens on that and the program is doing it by itself so this really helps out uh, streamlining the process of animation by just having the in-betweens being done by the computer itself. Uh, but yeah, how did I do the animation? Like, how do I know the, the dance and timing and all that stuff? That's because I have a reference, a pre-existing animation in the internet, uh, because Pivot doesn't allow you to have music here and all that stuff, so the best way to have it timed properly is probably by counting the frames. But because I have some in-betweens, and not, it's not even the right number if I put my, you know, Num uh, if it says they're frame 2, it's not really frame 2 because it's frame 3 because there's an in-between uh, between them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so I, I use this as a reference for the timing and also for the poses and all that stuff. So yeah, and then once that happens, I all I have to do is just, yeah, the, the music is here also. All I have to do is just import this here, like you can see, and then loop it. Uh, and try to mimic the timing on all the stuff and yeah it's on 24 frames per second this time I'm doing it the right way you know <laughs> compared to last time so yeah and now it's just a matter of exporting this without the background and all that stuff and doing it here like so so this is what I have uh, I have a composition with the three of them like that and then I have this in which uh, it's set up like this. I have a background and then the foreground or not really the foreground But a different layer in which they have this they have the same camera movement like so as you can see here uh, Where is it uh, camera movement? There you go camera uh, Parallel light turn that off. So there's our camera. You can move it close back whatever um, that's the floor Here's our camera. Okay move it forward backward and all that stuff it's the same camera here the reason why I'm separating the background and them even though I could just put them all together is because the f the floor uh, their floor here in the recording or the uh, reference that I have the camera is kind of tilted down so their feet are changing levels you'll see what I mean here so if the floor is there and then they move forward so now the floor is actually like slanted right so now here I tried to mimic that but because they are 2d images what would happen is that this it would clip their legs like so so I have to find a solution to not deal with that whole shenanigan so what I did is that I in changed that into invisible I have the same camera movement for this two and just made them in one composition well composition each so now I can turn this invisible and turn this invisible I don't know if that makes sense or that was explained clearly but that's how I did it so yeah this took like a four minute uh, tutorial thingy and I hope this helps you out whatever you're trying to do you want to check out pivot or whatever um, I'll try to share the files uh, that is the pivot file 
in you know the description and all that stuff if you want to check out pivot uh, if not uh, you know just i hope this helps you out i don't know but yeah thanks for watching and uh, see you around in the comment section